What up, what up, people, and welcome to Lane Pod, City of Lane's 10 to 15 minutes weekly podcast focused on MBA admissions and experience for motivated Africans. So, whether you're an MBA enthusiast, an applicant, an admit, or a student, this is the show for you. Hi, I'm Samuel, your host, and today we will be wrapping up a topic that resonates deeply with many of our listeners the obsession with MBA prestige and the unintended consequences it brings. Today, we will be wrapping that up, as I mentioned, by exploring what we call the healthy pursuit of growth and transformation through the MBA. But before I delve into that, I want to summarize what we've done so far in this four-part series. In part one, we explore the allure of prestigious MBA amongst African professionals. We discuss the societal pressures and perceived benefits that fuel that obsession. And if you haven't listened to that episode, I deeply encourage you to just scroll up through wherever it is you get your podcast from and find that episode. The second part covers or uncovers the dark side of this pursuit. We talk about the exclusion, the racism and unhealthy competition that often go unnoticed and unaccounted for in the decision making process. Again, if you haven't listened to that, please do. And in our last episode, which forms part three, we shifted our attention to the true value of MBA education beyond the program's brand name. We make a case for what we take for granted, and we argue that the knowledge, skills, connections, and experience gained during the during and after the MBA program are far more important than the institution name itself. And now, drum roll, please. We're closing things out by describing what an healthy pursuit of knowledge and true transformation looks like. So, today is going to be in a two-part. I love two-part things, two-part series. <laughs> First of all, we talk about the mindset and then we delve into how you can apply the mindset in different aspects of the MBA journey. So what do we mean by mindset? To to really pursue things in an healthy manner, especially when it comes to the MBA journey, you need to really start with a couple of underlining perspective. Number one is growth mindset. And actually, that's the whole thing you need. You need to have a mindset that says you're not a tree but can move. You can grow. There is no limit to how you can continuously improve and develop yourself. If you grew up in a culture where it's just assumed that as soon as you're old and in your 50s, whatever that age might be in your own culture, you have attained the pinnacle of enlightenment and that there is nothing else you can do to get even better. That is not the mindset you want to have. The mindset you want to have is the mindset of, I am constantly improving. I cannot be perfect. I cannot settle. And I cannot give up on constantly growing and evolving. And sometimes it it comes to the point where we think, oh, well, you know what? I'm too old for that. No, you are not too old for growth. There's a book called The Growth Mindset that I think it's important that you Google and find um, that, that really, really explains this. And there's some parts of growth mindset that I think it's important to remember. When you have a growth mindset, it allows you and forces you to be self aware. What do I mean by being self aware? When you know that you can grow and evolve, what are you going to do? You're constantly going to be monitoring what you're doing. You evaluate it. How can I do this better? There's no way you can do something better if you don't even know what your baseline is. And that's what Grit Mindset does to you. It helps improve your self-awareness. I'll take a moment to let that sink in. The second thing that it does for you when you have a growth mindset, and this is all skills, the mindset that you need, perspective shift that will be very important in your MBA journey. The second thing is it it ensures you're open to feedback. It opens your mind up. You're not going to be taking everything that people say that you did wrong as an attack because you know that you can grow and improve. By the way, the book I was referring to is the is the Mindset, the New Psychology of Success by Carol Dweck. Um, 
that book is powerful. Again, I repeat the title. It's called Mindset: The New Psychology of Success, and it's written by Carol C A R O L Dweck. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe it's Deck. It's D W E C K with a PhD behind. Get that book. It's transformative for anyone who wants to succeed or understand deeply what the growth mindset is all about. So let me go back into this. I talked about the 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 the, the 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 offshoots of growth mindset. One is self awareness. The other is openness to feedback. The other, the third is being quick to incorporate feedback. It's not just saying, "Oh yeah, Sam, you could be a lot better in doing this." It's also Sam thinking, "Okay, yeah, I could be a lot better. How can I be a lot better?" It's asking questions about practical steps you can take to be a lot better in X. It's about taking actions and consciously making effort to see that you are incorporating that feedback in your day-to-day -day work. And then the fourth thing that I think, fifth thing rather that I think it's important, I think it's fourth, Sam. <laughs> it's being able to reflect and say, okay, in the last X month since I received this feedback, how far have I come in my developmental process? How far have I come? That's a very, very important question to ask. And, you know, as we delve into this and we move into how you can apply the growth mindset into various aspects of the MBA journey, you'll start to see some of the themes that I'm mentioning. So let's delve into application. There's a lot, there's a lot of areas you could apply this into, but I want to focus on five areas that I think are far more important. Number one is in how you approach errors or mistakes that you make. When I say errors or mistake, for lack of a better word, it's an umbrella term for, you know, when you take the jury and you miss a question or a couple of questions, that's an error, that's a mistake. Um, when you do, when you're currently in the MBA program and you're doing your quizzes and you miss a certain question or you, you know, you're taking the test or an exam and you miss certain things, that's also an error or mistake. Um, when you're at work and you approach certain things from a perspective that yields the wrong results, that's also an error or mistake. So it's an umbrella term that I want you to contextualize given where you are in your journey. I'll, t I'll, I'll take the G right in the GRE as, a, as an example, but I want you to think about how this applies to where you are in your MBA journey. When people make mistakes and they miss certain questions, they don't spend time to really think about the underlining or the lying rather trend or or causes of that mistake. They just say, yeah, it's just trigonometry. It's tough. Yeah. Why is trigonometry, tr trigonometry tough for you? Why is, why, why is that difficult for you? Why do you not understand what an I? Potenus is what a right angle triangle is. Why are you assuming from the drawing that it's a right angle triangle without that corner thing at the bottom that shows ninety degrees between the two lines of one of the, you know, one the, the, the two lines of the triangle? Those are deep questions you need to ask yourself, and you don't need to stop there. You need to ask yourself, why am I making assumptions by just looking at things that seem to you know, fit into something that I think I know. Can you see I've just taken one simple question on uh, on right angle triangles that may not be right angle triangles, and I have essentially extrapolated that into my life. Why am I making assumptions? So what I usually do and I encourage people is split like when you write in the GRE again find ways that you can uh, can apply this whether you're casing you're preparing for interviews you're writing your mba exams or whatever the case might be what i'll do is i'll split the book into half one half is for taking the test and marking it the other half is for digging deep into what is driving the errors and mistakes that i make i try to find trends i try to find what aspect of my daily life follows that trend or what aspect of my daily life encourages or drives or makes it easy for me to make that mistake and i will focus on those areas this is the gap in my understanding is it because at certain point in my life i failed to learn what i was supposed to learn is it because in my environment where i grew up i was not exposed to certain things how do i then begin to expose myself to those things those are deep questions you need to ask yourself 
errors, mistakes, they're gifts. They're gifts to reveal inadequacies. And it is the smartest ones out of us all, the ones with a growth mindset who will dig, dig deep into that and really expose the weaknesses. So that's one. Number two is networking. When I talk about networking, someone with a growth mindset will test run in a controlled environment. You know that you're never going to get it right with your first networking call. Sometimes you can even go into the call, like some, you, you, you reach out to someone and say, hey, the reason why I'm reaching out to you is because I'm trying to network to get a consulting role, but I don't think I'm great at networking yet. So what are some of the things you will you think I should do when I reach out to people like you? Is it okay? And they tell you, is it okay? Is it okay for role play? And then you practice. Anyone who reaches out to me to do that, one hundred percent gonna give them more than thirty minutes they ask for, because people don't do it. You'd be shocked. In fact, they'd be surprised if you reach out saying, "To be honest, I don't know how to do this." I don't, but I can learn. So would you show me how to network? Would you show me how to run a 15 minutes call with someone I'm trying to get into a firm for? I cannot teach you that on a podcast. And I'm sure I cannot tell you what works in America. Might never work in Canada or might not even work in Europe. Find people who you can be honest with. And you're honest with them, you practice, and you take it to someone else and you practice. It's like, okay, you, you run the call, you didn't say anything about, uh, uh, let me be very clear. You, you test run it, you're honest with one group of people, and you say, teach me how to do it. The next phase is to then take it to another group of people, or if they turn you down or they say, no, it's not going to impact you. So if you're trying to get into Bain, Don't go right off speaking to people from Bain, first of all. Find a tier two, tier three, um, you know, um, people to speak to. Own your networking skills. And be honest with some of them, with them. Like, for some, you say, hey, here's what I'm trying to do. Can you help me out? For others, you would run the call based on the feedback you've gotten from the first group of people. And then you say, after the end of the call, look, I know there are a couple of things I probably could have done better in this call what a day do you mind sharing what i could have done better in this call and that's how you grow that's how you evolve that's how you evolve that's networking now let's move into communication and i want to focus on email writing email writing is going to be the primary mode of communication throughout your mba after your mba and for as long as you want to remain in the corporate world it needs to be structured. It doesn't have to be a story. Use bullet points. Starts with a very descriptive subject that tells the reader what you want from them without even opening that email. Always start with a thank you. I mean, if you've had previous conversation with them, it's important to thank them for their support, for their help, for their quick response. If you had initial conversation, please start with a thank you. Follow it up with a brief context. One, two short sentence. Don't go spending two paragraphs explaining the context to them. It's important, but not that important. Then you delve into the main point or your request. One thing that you're trying to achieve out of that email. And then you can provide two, three, max four reasons or evidence why that's the main thing. And then you invite them to ask you questions. Hey, yeah, I'm happy to answer any question that you may have on this. Or what are your thoughts on this? And then thank them again. Yeah, just quickly summarize what I think, not what I think a great email is, what a great email actually is. But it's important to spend time understanding the etiquette and the culture of email writing. It will set you apart. And when you're writing emails, when you, especially when you think someone has done something wrong, come from a perspective of curiosity help me understand what you know i may be missing out here i think this may not be right but i could be missing something out help me understand what that is don't make assumptions come from the angle of curiosity the fourth aspect you want to also focus on is is relationships it's an important part of your transformation I'd always say one thing, two things about relationship, two words, empathy, friendliness, empathy, 
friendliness come from the place of empathy i think that's simple as much as it can be and be friendly your colleagues are not they're your colleagues they're not your family members be cordial but be weary about getting too personal ask yourself am i comfortable with what i've just shared with them being shared with other people because i can assure you they'll tell other people you think you're your best friend but they have their best friends and they'll tell their best friends who will tell their own best friends and before you know it what you thought you had shared with someone in a vulnerable state the whole class now knows about it don't bow mouth others just for the same reason the words spread out really fast they're going to say oh by the way you know the samuel thinks that way too samuel thinks that x is not great or samuel thinks that 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 y is an asshole whatever that word is no stay diplomatic you really have all the facts you really have all the stories so you do not be in a position where you're quoted to think that why things that you think x <laughs> and then five keep a policy of no expectations no one owes you anything this is very very important and it, i know it seems like i'm breezing through some of this very important point play this all over again dig, dig deep into it uncover the gems polish it because there's a lot to uncover in this but let me wrap it up by saying no one owes you anything it's on you and no one else everything they offer you is extra that's how you go through this journey transforming yourself it's on you to grow it's on you to get the job not the school it's on you to create a relationship not on others it's on you everything is on you have no sense of entitlement and, and wrapping this up i'm just going to summarize everything to really go through this journey of a transform to to, to 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 go through the journey of an healthy pursuit of a transformation and i know there's a lot a bunch of big words in there honestly what i'm trying to say is to be truly transformed in this journey switch to a growth mindset and apply it in every aspect of your life i've only mentioned five areas number one there are many others number one mine your mistake as you would do to a gold mine Test run your networking in a controlled environment and leverage other people to grow before you go into the game, right? Have practice sessions before you go into the game. And it applies to all, to all aspects of life. Number three, start your communication with the first things first. Thank people if you have a previous conversation with them. Number four, remember your colleagues are not your family members. And lastly, everything is on you. Not your mother, not your father, not your colleague, not your school, not the employee, not the rec employer, not the recruiter, not anyone else. Everything is in you. So thank you for listening to today's episode. It's a bit longer, but if you'd like to ask a question or learn more about Lane, links in the description or in the show notes, or you could just Google and look for us. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.